Okay. Hi, everybody, and welcome. And I'm so excited to see some faces that I haven't seen in a long time. This is exciting to me. Um, I wanted to talk tonight about something that's become very near and dear to my heart really recently. Um, <clears throat> I myself have really um, been affected quite a bit lately. Um, within the last week or so, I had someone message me on my page. I added her as a friend on Facebook and literally the next day I had a book in my inbox. Hey, I'm a Rodan and Fields rep. Have you ever heard about this and this and this? And I, I can give you, you know, this percentage off if you wanted to be a representative and, blah, blah, blah. and it was like, blah. like, I don't even know you. What are you talking about? And it slapped me right in the face that like, oh my goodness, look at what other people are doing with multi-level marketing and look at what people have to deal with on their Facebook, right? So we don't want to be those people at all because that's, that's no bueno. I myself had to make this, this huge mind shift recently, actually, really recently. Um, I kind of, I'm one of those people that thinks network marketing is icky, like in a big way. I think it's gross. I, I have people that I know that I like kind of avoid because I know they want me to, you know, they don't want to be friends with me because I, I didn't sign on to sell Advocare or something like that. Um, so if for me doing something like this, it was such a, like, I was like, oh, wow, like, what am I doing? And I had these, all these internal struggles until I really looked at myself and I want all of you guys to raise your hand if Beachbody has profoundly affected your life. Right? Right? Why are we not so ecstatic to share this with other people? For me anymore, it's easier for me to recruit to my team than it is to ask someone to be a customer because they get a discount, right? Or um, there's an opportunity, um, you know, someone, husband lose their job, something like that. There's an opportunity there for that person. Um, so it's, it's made this huge mental shift for me. And I wanted to talk you guys through my recruiting process and how I'm doing it. Um, you guys know that I'm not, um, I, I do teach fitness classes, but it, they're mostly the same people that are coming to my classes now, right? But I'm still recruiting people and I'm doing it through social media. So I wanted to um, talk to you guys kind of about how I do it. Um, I am currently trying to make my social media like a sneak peek. Right? So I want people to know when they look at my page that I'm a health and fitness coach and I work from home. I run health and fitness groups and it is something that they could do as well. Right? Pretty simple. Then when I talk to, I mean, I would say 90% of the time when I talk to people on social media and, and I start conversations and say, what is the thing that you do? What is the health thing you do? You know? Um, and then that, I mean, that starts the conversation into beach body right away and I don't even have to, you know, um, but it starts really with building relationships with people. I add three to five people a day on my social media and I send them a message. And a lot of these people, I don't know. Do you know how scary that was for Emily? That was scary for Emily, but Emily wants it, right? I want to build a business and I want to help people. So I, I add three to five people a day and I will send them a message that just says, Hey, new friend, I would love to get to know you better. Tell me a little bit about yourself, something, something like that. And I have ongoing conversations with all sorts of people. Now you need to be sensitive of the fact though, that you're not like, Hey, how are you? What, what's life like da, 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 about beach body coaching? Like you need to be sensitive to the fact you need to build a real relationship with people before you talk to them about joining your team. Um, Another huge mind shift for me was <clears throat> I have this girl that is, I've been friends with her since high school and she is athletic and she has always been athletic and she is, was like a track star and a swimmer and like just that girl that you were like, oh, 
wow, like so cool. She placed at state and all this. Um, now she's a personal trainer and she is phenomenal. She does Ironmans and all this crazy stuff. And I was afraid to talk to her, like really afraid to talk. Like I, Emily's a nerd. Emily was like a nerd in high school, like like school theater. I was just like, Rah! like it, you know. And I had this weird notion that I couldn't talk to her about something like this because I'm not like an athlete like she was or whatever. I had a conversation with her. We've talked for, you know, a month before I even brought up the possibility. And she was like, wow, thank you. I'm so flattered that you would even think of me for this. And I was like, what? <laughs> Emily was in her own way there, guys, right? Emily had preconceived notions about somebody else, and I had no idea what was going on in her life. And I had no, I mean, I had, but Emily thought she couldn't do it. How many of you guys right now are in your own way about one, a conversation or somebody that you feel like, I don't think I could talk to that person? Are you in your own way? Yeah. Do you have people, do you have, please tell me all of you have a dream team list of 10 people that you want on your team, that you want to travel with, that you want to be with, right? You want to come to summit with you. You want to, you guys all want it or you wouldn't be on this call, right? Who's your dream team? Who's your 10? Have you talked to them? Right? Are we standing in our own way just a little bit? Emily was. And when I asked my team the same thing, are you got, who's in their own way? Every single person raised their hand. It's not an easy thing to admit, but one of the most important things you can do in this business is do it, fail, fail forward and move on, right? So if you're a new coach, you have to invite. It's weird, it feels different. You're not gonna be very good at it at first. I was horrible when I first started. I wrote books to people and I didn't ask engaging questions and I didn't build a great relationship first and I probably turned people off of it. But regardless, I did it and I kept doing it and I kept failing and I got a little better next time, right? Right, so I want you guys to, I have all sorts of notes. I never look at, <laughs> I get all impassioned and stop looking at my notes. Um, so common issues that I've seen um, with invitations or recruiting are just like I talked about with the Rodan and Fields lady, a book. She, she comes at me with a book and she doesn't, there's no, there's no repartee. There's nothing except like, oh, I thought you might like to be a rep on my team. What are you talking about? Um, are you starting a genuine conversation? And are you asking questions? No one should be joining your team if you don't know them. They shouldn't. You should know about them. You should at least know about their family, their occupation, what they want in life. I mean, you need to know these things in order to create a good experience for that coach coming in. How are you supposed to have an amazing getting started? I mean, all you need to know somebody and their intentions before coming in, right? You need to have good, meaningful, deep conversations with people. I meet people on the internet and I have deep conversations with people that I just met on the internet, right? You need to be a conversationalist. If you want your business to grow, 99% of us need to do it through social media. We just do. Most of us don't need enough people in our everyday lives that we're able to sustain, to, to grow a huge business like we're looking to do, right? You need to have these meaningful conversations and ask questions. Somebody says something to you, ask another question. You always want the conversation to keep moving. Because if you just blurt out something, how easy is it to be like, oh, the conversation's done? You keep asking questions until you know the person. So that is how I build my relationships and then go, and, and I've, I've broken down my own walls around recruiting. So I feel like it is flattering 
if I, if I, and I, I honestly genuinely have to feel someone would be a good fit for my team. They have to be a little quirky. They have to have, want to have fun. They have to, you know, that's who my people are. And that's who you should be. Everyone on this call is so different. Like you need to find your people. You need to find what is, what you are. And then express that through social media. And then those people will come to you. I've started, um, if you do follow my social media at all, I've started really making it more of a sneak peek. You will notice I do a lot more conversation about, I am lucky to get to stay home with my children. That's huge. I was supposed to go back to managing a bank. I'm not. Like my daughter, I'm, I'm still home. When my daughter turned five, that was my cutoff. And I'm, I don't have to go back. And I'm, ge I'm genuinely really jazzed about that. I didn't like managing a bank and I want people to know that, that they can change their lives as well. So if you guys are not doing that and expressing that to people, you're really doing your business and your friends a disservice. So, um, I really want you guys to take some time. I want you to find somebody that, and, this is, I, I always tell my team, like, I'm not your boss. I'm not going to give you an assignment. I'm going to say, I think that this could genuinely help your business. I think you should have someone that you know and trust um, that will be honest with you. We all have someone like that in our lives to go through your social media and ask those questions. Can you tell that I'm a health and fitness coach by my social media? Can you tell that I run health and fitness groups? And can you tell that people that are looking at my social media, that they could do it as well? That's, that's it. And honestly, when, you, when you're first starting out a new coach, some of your, everything gets better. Your verbiage gets better. The way you talk through social media gets better, but you have to do it. If you want it, you have to do it. You have to make posts. They're not going to be good at first. I should have pulled up a whole bunch of my old ones and you guys would have been like, oh, because they were awful, but I did it because I wanted this for my family. So you have to get over yourself, get out of your own way and do it. Cool. So I'm reading um, this book that El Ellen actually told me about called TED Talks. And um, it, the most meaningful thing, the most meaningful presentation you can do is about 18 minutes long. So I'm just about at 18 minutes now. So I am done. If you guys have any questions or comments or anything, I would love to hear them. Leslie, do you know how to unmute yourself? I can do it. I can do it. Oh, you got it. You got it. I got it. Yeah. So a couple of questions, Emily. Um, so I'm a new coach and um, I, you know, feel like I'm off to a good start with my business, but I know at this point that I need to recruit in order to, you know, actually obtain my goals and make some actual money. Um, but, and I, I have found that I get so I'm so excited because I didn't realize the opportunity that existed with this business and I want to share with other people, but, um, I've been too much of a spaz and just like blurted it out, you know, instead of like I connected with this high school friend that I haven't seen, I don't know, 20 years and she's awesome. Like fitness. She's always into fitness. She's always doing something. She's a PE teacher. She's, you know, would be perfect. And I thought she was a, just would be perfect. And we were on a phone call and I was like, and you'd be a perfect beach body coach. And I think I totally turned her off to it. So I need to learn to slow my roll a little bit. <laughs> so. I, I think in a lot of ways, excitement and that new excitement is contagious. So I don't think you turned her off of it. I think you might've planted a seed. Do you know how many, <laughs> I've talked to so many people that were like, huh, uh, no. And then Six months later, guess who comes knocking? Like, about that, I think I'm ready to, like, I have a girl that just, just joined my team yesterday. I've talked to her, I think, for 10 months. And oh it gosh. just had, I, it's not a sprint. This is a marathon. 
It is. It is. And if you, if yeah. you want good people on your team and you feel in your heart, she would be a good person for your team. Sounds like she's on your like dream team list. You keep yes. talking to her and you keep putting the bug in her ear. If she's a PE teacher, she probably knows something about nutrition, stuff like that. Just be like, I would love to send you some Shakeology so you can try it. It is amazing. And well, she's already doing Shakeology. She's in my challenge group. But um, I hope you didn't scare her too much because she, um, you know, she's, and she does amazing posts on my challenge group. She's better at it than I am. I'm like, you are such a good coach. And when I'm trying to think, what am I going to post? She'll post something that's great. I'm like, oh, thank you, Joy. But I know. So maybe you maybe feel better. Maybe I did plant a seed with her. Maybe that'll work out better than I think in the future. But one more thing I wanted to ask you. So when you say that you contact three to five people a day, um, where do you get your contacts? And I don't want to come off as like um, a sex solicitor. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, first off, I'm my, not saying you are, but no, you know, like, no, you get those random, actually, like, what are you doing? And I'm like, yeah, I have a secret. No, so I have very much crafted my Facebook page. I have a very approachable picture as my, my picture. And then my face, my, the thing background for my thing is my kids. It says make today count. It, okay. I, I've embodied the fact that I'm a mom. I'm not a creeper. I have a hut, like my, a mom, a husband, like a wife. And then on my social media, they can see I post like funny memes and I'm just non threatening in that way. Because I mean, that's who I really am. <laughs> I really like funny memes. But um, it's, um, you will not come across like that. I don't think you could. I don't think I could if I tried, but. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Thank so, you. Yeah, of course. Um, yeah, that is why, you know, I add three, I add three and where do I find them? I go through and I yeah. find friends that are like me. I have friends that are crazy and zany and they have friends that are crazy and zany too. Mm -hmm. And I will go look at their Facebook profile. And I'll be like, Ugh, they've got kids. They're funny. And I'll go click add friend. And I'm telling you like, yeah, there, there I be. <laughs> um, I um, click, at, I mean, 95% of the time, because I look non-threatening, whatever, they add me as a friend. Mm -hmm. Some people, the weird thing, when I first started getting those things, how do I know you? They'd be like, mm -hmm. and like, hey, hey, you know what? You're a friend of a friend, and you look like someone that I should be friends with. Mm -hmm. You flatter them and say, hey, I want to be your friend because you look fun and funny like me or something. I mean, mm -hmm. just find And I can do that in person. Yeah. Do I do that better in person than social media. Do it. You have to get good at social media, though. I know it's so weird and it's foreign, but that's <laughs> how your business is going to grow. So it's, it, it, it takes a while. Mine mm -hmm. was a hot mess for forever, so <laughs> Keep doing what you're doing, and it'll get better and better. Hey, Thank Emily. You. Emily, how do you know that, that when you have just people like, because, you know, Connie and I will get friend requests, more Connie than I. Um, so, you know, we all of a sudden get our hackles up, like, going, okay, who's in the scammer, you know, and, and, uh, and we'll be wanting to, like, okay, how do I know you? And, and then if they, you know, then they don't respond, we're just like, ah, you know. Well, some, of them, some of them are pretty obvious when they're like boobs are about ready to fall out of their shirt and they're in this sexual pose and they only have a couple of friends. Yeah. Know, so you, you know not to add those people. You add friends of friends. You don't add, you don't add people that are going to be like post questionable things on your timeline. I also, because I have people that I don't know super well, have the thing where I have to approve it before it goes on my timeline. So if someone were to put something creepy like, hey, check out this porn site or whatever, I would be like, oh, and delete them as a friend and the whole thing. <laughs> 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 that, that was good. <laughs> so, so it is weird. and But when you're dealing with friends of friends, especially like my friends, it's not scary or weird. They're people that are like me. They're friends with my friends for a reason. And I'm just expanding my network. And some people that I've added on there that were not friends are like my legitimate friends now. They might not be on Shakeology. They might not be coaches on my team, but they're friends. They post taco memes all day. 
<laughs> they do. Um, can I say something? Can I say something? I've noticed that the majority of people on Facebook will friend just about anyone if you have a common friend. So those of us who are more cautious are actually more rare. Like most of my friends have hundreds of friends and it's because they're like, oh my gosh, I'm friends with that person. So we have something in common, so we should be friends. So I know like it's, um, it's really hard to, if you're a cautious person, especially on the internet, to break that mindset of, well, I'm being stalkerish, you know, because we don't want to be stalkerish. But um, if you have, like she's saying, they're friends of friends and you have something in common, they're not going to think you're stalkerish at all. They're just going to think you're just cool just like them. So, yeah. Um, another thing that actually I didn't even mention that has been huge for me is finding groups of, like, interests that I have. So I enjoy makeup and I like Stitch Fix, the styling thing, and I like, um, there's like Lululemon groups, and there's running groups, and all that stuff. There's all these different groups out there with thousands of members in them, and it's very easy to make friends there, and I have some friends from like an old, uh, it was like a Mommies Who Run group, and I still have people that like are my friends from places like that, so Figure out who you are and what you love and join some groups and be chatty. I was going to comment a little bit for Leslie. I don't think your exuberance is was bad at all. I mean, you're a new coach. You're excited about it. I think that was, that was um, not spammy. That was just natural. Um, and I, I would have a conversation with her at some point that if you haven't already, that says exactly what you told us, like she's, she's already coaching. She's already like, would you like to get paid for what you're already doing in the group? That's kind of what I would say to her. Um, my diamonds know who are on this call, which are three of them. Tell me, tell and, me that one. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, that's how I got Brian. <laughs> um, by my Bri by Brian, my diamonds, Brian and Emily and Christy C and my personally sponsored Emerald C that I, I post, I get, I, I'm part of this Facebook group called The Wall, which is our top coaches, like the company's top, top coaches, and it's really cool. And one of the things that was posted, you guys, one of the top coaches, I think it was, um, I think it was Scotty Hobbs, asked to The Wall, he asked, how long did it take you these are to the top coaches. How long did it take you to sign up as a coach from the day you heard about the opportunity? And people were like, two years, six months, one year, nine months, five months, three years, one year, one year, nine months, six months, three months, five. Nobody was like, oh, that day, that week, that month. I mean, there was maybe a one or two people that said that. But um, so it, it's cool. Like when you're starting out, it's cool. Like you have that warm market of people that in your life that you can reach out to, but it's also cool when you've been doing it. I, I sometimes say there's a sweet spot that happens at about a year of coaching where you, where, a, where a lot of the seeds start to come to fruition. So that was one thing I wanted to say. Um, I also, I'm, I'm going to be a little bit all over the place. I've been taking notes. Emily's um, social media is incredible. Um, if you are not following her, you should be. Um, it's, it's remarkable and it's really progressed. Um, I know mine has really evolved too. And so I wanted to say that she and I both would, pro I don't want to speak for her, but I'm kind of going to, I think she and I both would be willing if, if you guys wanted to have an, a, a conversation with us, like, Hey, will you look at my Instagram and give me feedback? Um, she and I would probably both be willing to do that because we've, we've both failed forward a lot to figure out like what doesn't work and what does work. Um, also, those of you that have been coaching for like a year, when you see your Facebook memories come up a year ago on this day, I hope that you're seeing what I'm seeing on mine. Because what I'm seeing is like a year ago on this day, eight people liked my post and one person commented. And today I'm seeing 150 people liked my post and 35 people commented. 
And it's because I've been failing forward for a year, figuring out what works, what doesn't work, what works, what, and how to engage and how to engage. And so I know Emily could probably say, I know she could say the same thing. And so that's what we want is just progress. Emily, did you want to say something about that? Um, when you had said something, I, a light bulb came on for me, but it wasn't necessarily about that. Yeah. But I, I, um, have really found that Instagram for me is going to be like my next vista of opportunity because so I've gotten every single one of my coaches and everybody from Facebook. And that's because I was not doing a good job at Instagram. Like I was not figuring out what I was doing. So I, I have like completely redone everything that I've done. Um, and I have a lot more followers now. Um, and I've started doing like business opportunity posts. Like, you know, it's, it was the first or second of February and just said, you know, this is what I do. Coaches wanted for February internship and literally people messaged me. What is it you're doing? I don't say I'm a beach body coach because people are afraid of MLM and I want them to be able to talk to me and see that I'm a real person and not creepy. Um, so I say, I have this opportunity if you want to be a health and fitness coach. Um, and I've gotten some really cool, um, conversations going on right now from Instagram, which is I amazing. These are people I don't know at all. Whereas Facebook, I know, I, you know, kind of get to know people by having conversations with them. So, um, I've been, people are starting to, when they follow me, I will just go in and quick message them. Thank you so much for the follow. I'm on a health and fitness journey. Are you on a health and fitness journey as well? Some people don't write back, which is like, okay, that's cool. Um, I've got conversations going on right now with people on Instagram, which is in crazy, insane. Like a mom from Canada that doesn't want to go back to work after, I mean, in Canada is the next frontier. Canadian yeah. coaches do really well. Um, so um, Instagram is amazing. That's what I think the wake up call from this morning is about. Isn't it about going to be Instagram ish? I, I don't listen on Mondays. So did any of you hear that? It was good. It was good. I used some good tips on, on what, on what to do. Was it about Instagram? It was yeah. about Instagram. Um, 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 it was um, quick too. I love how quick they are. But it's really getting out of your own way and make and you just do it. And you might feel a little bit weird about it talking to a stranger or whatever. Like just do it. Push send and put your phone down and you've done it. It's done. It's out there. Yeah. Who cares? Uh, I don't know, yeah. <laughs> right? Right. <laughs> Who yeah. cares? Um, the other thing that Emily does um, is, uh, for those of you guys that don't follow her, is she really has found a very specific niche, like a really specific nerdy mom niche. And it's, she's, her, her account is like, she has such a strong brand in that like funny nerdy mom. Um, it's, it's, it's like palpable, like you can see her brand just in like five seconds of her account. And a lot of the top coaches are that way. So I'm, I really pay attention to Emily's and like Elise Hubbard is a phenomenal Instagram coach and she's making six figures now. And, um, she's in my mastermind group. So I talk to her a lot and uh, I talk to her once a week in this group and she, her brand, she was a WIC welfare, overweight, depressed mom. And I know you don't see like that much of that on our team play hard just because there's so many like fitness professional freaks on our team, but that's not the company. And Elise Hubbard is this top, top, top coach. And her brand is WIC welfare moms that want a way out of their situation. And, um, and just like Emily said, she's a, she, it's almost like a sneak peek. It's, she's answering questions, um, subtly about coaching in the way that she posts. Um, and Kate Davis, so, yeah. To piggyback on that, when you're talking to your audience, you are talking to the old you, right? So the you before Beachbody. What were you? What were your? Because the people are like you that you're trying to grab to you. What did you think? What didn't make you sign up at first? I didn't feel like I had a 
had beach body. Like that is the number one thing. I was like, I could never do this. I'm still overweight. I still need to lose more weight. Um, as well as the cost. I was like, I can't, I didn't know that you didn't have to keep stuff in your house. I didn't know there wasn't like a $600 sign. Like I didn't know, but I wasn't going to ask anybody because I was still overweight. Do you know what I mean? So I'm trying to talk to old me and say, Hey, you don't have to have a beach body. You don't come join us and you can get one if you want it. If not, just get healthy or you know, you don't have to spend a whole bunch of money. Like get yourself some Shakeology and a, a program and it's not, you don't have to pay anything. I mean, talk to the old you that had these same concerns and talk about those concerns in your posts, right? That's what a sneak peek is. People have all these concerns and all these, you know, they're like, why would I, you know, they have no idea how cool this is. You have to tell them, right? We're making money from nothing. We get to drink Shakeology and that is a food and we are making money. I, it's crazy, right? We need to tell people how cool it is. So do that in your social media. That was actually that's right. my, my biggest takeaway. You could like, when she said, you're talking to the old you, it was like, drop the mic. <laughs> that was the line for me. That's my biggest takeaway. That was awesome. Yes. Drop the mic. Talking to the old you. Sure. It's drunk. I, <laughs> I wrote that down actually like I totally did so do that in every in all of your posts and post consistently and I know some people will say don't post consistent like I have to post cons that's how you get new followers you post consistently you post about your day and what you do as a coach and that you have children and you're making it work and you you know you I have can a question about <laughs> about Wednesday's training or Wednesday's um, oh, yeah. webinar. Yeah. Is that for, yeah, tell me a little bit about that. Okay, you thank you for asking. So I think this is my sixth or seventh consecutive one. They're, they're tending to improve because every time I do one, I listen to it back and I'm like, oh, I should have said this and I shouldn't have said that. So they're tending to get better each month. And basically I have a slideshow. It has not ever gone longer than 30 minutes. So I go through the slideshow and I present the business opportunity. And so you coaches come on, you guys come on and we've, we've had good attendance and then you guys invite. So Leslie, you could, for instance, invite the PE teacher person and just say, Hey, you know, it, it's a zoom. It's like this. And a lot of people are scared to get on a zoom. So there's an event. You could invite her, um, tell her you really, really like her to come on. She can be anonymous. She doesn't have to talk. Um, she can just listen. Um, and I, you can say my upline is leading it and I go through the business opportunity presentation. So I tell them everything there is to know about becoming a coach, what it costs, what we do, how great it is. I show transformation pictures. It's, it's awesome. Um, it's the most successful approach that, that we've had in team building so far. Like it, so far for me, it, our, our conversion rate has been the highest of, of everything I've tried. Um, so like I'm inviting six people and my guess is all six will join. Maybe not the next day, but I think all six will join as a result. Um, also I record it. And then if people ask me about the business, but in that next month, I send them last month's recording. So I'm using that webinar all the time. I sent last month to someone today. Okay. So then what I really love is when like Julie Day will be inviting someone or Nick Felder or Kara Churchill and they box me. You finally are on Vox, Leslie. They box me and they say, hey, I have someone coming on. Here's her concern. I know that she's concerned that she doesn't have a beach body. Like I know that's her concern. Or Nick Felder told me, hey, can you really highlight the fact that you didn't graduate college? Because that's what I'm bringing someone and I think that part of your message will speak to this person. So I love knowing who you guys are bringing on. Then it's not about me. Like it's not like my show. So then at the end, I like to kind of get out of the way and let you coaches that have invited. I like, I just kind of open it up for questions and I encourage like if you, if, if anyone who came on tonight, if you want to ask any questions at all um, of the person that invited you, um, or, or of me, go ahead. And, and then it just becomes this great, great 
like dialogue like this but they're asking like you know they're they're asking all, all questions which usually leads me to fill in any holes in the presentation it's it's been amazing like it's it's i mean i've added more coaches to the team since starting that webinar than ever so i would encourage you guys to use it um, i think emily does her own you do your own right we were doing our own and honestly i'm getting more coaches from my social media being we're doing another one on the 24th but um you don't even have to do the the people that i was uh listening to and the recruiting stuff they don't even do sneak peeks like top 10 coaches don't even you know it's people all come different. to them it's all different some top coaches do big challenge groups some do little some do webinars some do facebook sneak peeks like they're that's the best thing i think about this business you can do you have to make it your own mm. like you cannot run your business like anybody else so everybody should be different in the way that they run theirs but i think sneak peeks are amazing especially when i was a new coach it would have been so great to be able to like i didn't know what i was talking about to, so to have somebody that did be able to answer questions and that would have been huge so i think they're super yeah it is also great for new coaches to to kind of lean on me for that as well because like i mean i remember as a new coach not feeling comfortable even talking about shakeology and i would have loved it if my upline could do that for me for a little while you know um until you get good at it so that's what that's for um i do record it and we you know it's just been it's been really effective so I highlight the fact that our team is in the top 1% of the company now. Like I, I brag about that. I'm like, if, if you were, and I'm super not pushy. So I'm, I'm always using language. Like if you decide that this might be a good fit for you, like I, I'm always really non pushy, of course. And then, but I, I, I brag about like, you'd be joining one of the very top teams and you know, it's, I don't know. I think it's, it's been effective. So that's, I do that once a week. I mean month middle of the month. Well, Beth, Stacy, anything? I'm just taking it all in. <laughs> hey, you've been a recruiting machine, little Miss Stacy. <laughs> I'm trying. <laughs> You're doing great. I'm you know, really um, thank you. My biggest struggle, and I don't know why, but it's just creating that invite and throwing it out there. I, I did my uh, invite to the challenge group, our next challenge group tonight. And I swear it took me two hours to come up with words just to put it on those. So that is what I'm struggling with the most. Um, Are you talking about like messages or you mean the verbiage that you're using for a post? Just the verbiage. For a post. <laughs> for so a post. when I was uh, first a new coach, I followed top coaches, a whole bunch of them. And I would see kind of the stuff that they were posting, like, um, and use, you know, not use their verbiage, but like use it for inspiration on my own, just because at first it's like, I don't even know. Now it's like second right. nature, but it, I had no idea. It was bad. So it just kind of piecemealed stuff together and it worked. And I finally just hit send and it went on. I'm like, I did it. I got two likes. One of them's Christy, but that's okay. I can't recruit her. <laughs> Uh, Stacy, are you, um, are you, is it taking you so long? I mean, are you afraid? Is it fear? Is it like fear of what they're oh, going to see? Absolutely. Okay. So, I think I so, I think so I, this is, this is my fear. Um, <clears throat> I follow, I follow a lot of beach body coaches and I see things that are appealing and I see things that are not so appealing. And I think what my fear is, is that I'm going to come off as the non-appealing person. Okay. So I think that's really what my biggest fear is. So I, I understand. 
and I relate. Um, and I sent a post today that almost made me, it, I was, it was just so out there. It was so out there about the webinar. It was so out there that I was afraid people are going to see this and just think I'm just, you know, this spammy person that's out for money. Um, so two things. Um, one, Emily heard this. Brian heard this. Beth, Dustin, and Mary heard this when we were at Super Saturday in Portland when Missy Reaver said five seconds of brave. Be brave for five seconds because Stacy, you're not you're not spammy. You're not out for you're not the things that you're afraid they'll they'll perceive of you. That, that you're not. So they would be wrong to form that opinion. So five seconds of brave and and do it. It's because you believe it that it would better their lives. That's where it's coming from. And um, I love that five seconds of brave push the button. The other thing is I now that I put that big one out there that I did today, like you did today, now I'm going to dilute it with all kinds of stuff. You're going to see a lot of my dogs and a lot of my cooking and a lot of other stuff to just like dilute it. So it's so I'm just like, if it came off as a big right hook, it's going to soften. Um, and then the other thing I was going to say um, is sometimes when I'm really afraid of, of how I'm going to be perceived in an inviting, I will lead with that. Like, take the power out of it by saying, I'm afraid. That, and, you know, this last time I posted about this, it took me two hours because I was afraid of coming off like this. Like, you know, I was afraid of coming off. I was afraid of turning people off. You lead with it. Take the power out of it and then write it. Yeah. Those are my two tips. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Krasiki, you got anything? <laughs> my, my biggest takeaway was what Emily said about trying to uh, appeal to people that were your old you. And I actually did that today in a post. And can you hear me? Yeah, okay. Um, because one of the things that first like struck me with Beachbody was T25. And I've really started to network again in the running community because that's the old me. That's a big part of who I am. And today my post about Tony Horton's 22 was all about time and a race that I'm going to do and long story short. So I'm kind of like you, Ellen, I'll do like a hard right hook, so to speak. And then I'll dilute a whole bunch of other stuff about things that like interest me. So my biggest takeaway from this was what Emily said was try and appeal to the old you because that's actually what I've been trying to do lately, like all over again, slowly but surely. Yeah. And I mean, I and I've also been branching out a lot. It's really hard, but I've been trying to message at least three to five new people a day. Um, trying to connect with five new people a day. So I'm trying very hard to expand my network and actually it's, it's working. And so I mean, as consistent as possible. Yeah. <laughs> and I love Instagram. That's all I know. <laughs> that one's hard for me, Emily. So I'm with you on that. Like, it's weird for me to message people on Instagram. It, it's it so is. odd. It is. And my, my thinking has changed so much recently that I'm like, this is a gift that I have to give to people. Like we need to tell more people we could, all of us have been profoundly touched by it. Why wouldn't we want to help other people be profoundly touched by it? If it's your health, your finances, my mind, like I'm a nice, like my mind is different now. All the personal development. I'm just like, I mean, <laughs> It's changed my life. And I want other people to see that that's an availability for them. So I keep, I keep shutting myself down to like, Emily, just because you don't know them, this could change their life. And I do that. I say that every time. This is a gift. I'm given a gift. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, Instagram, Instagram is one that I absolutely, I love. If I could 
like during the summer, I was posting like three, four times a day um, because I put a lot of thought into what I post normally. So it, it takes me a while. I love your posts though. I mean, you're, I mean, just kind of a free spirit and out in nature and running and all that. I mean, I get you and your brand because of the stuff that you post. So the only thing that I'm saying is open up a little bit more about how beach bodies change you. My body, and, and just start to to draw more of people like you, those free spirits, those runners to you. I mean, her account is lovely. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Um, it's beautiful. Like you're, it's it it's is like beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, guys. I know we could stay on all night. No, you're like, no, we couldn't. You're like, get, like, take it away. No. Um, that was great. That was helpful for me. Um, yeah, lots of takeaways and it's good stuff. And if you don't follow me on Instagram, I'm Clever Emily Gets Fit. Follow me on Instagram. You can see how nerdy I really am. <laughs> when we, I'm going to close with this. When we have a little tiny, tiny niche that we're talking to, when we figured out like who we are, who we're marketing. So for Emily, it's that um, nerdy hot mess mom that's smart, that is goofy. Um, for Elise Hubbard, it's the WIC welfare mom that wants freedom. Um, you know, when, when we find our, for Kate Davies, it's that earthy person that wants to go on a hike every day and explore new things with a backpack on her back. Um, when we find our niche, when we start t talking to that niche, um, and it feels like we're narrowing our, um, we're narrowing our focus, we're actually, we're actually more powerful. So our fear is, um, I learned this in a social media training last year. Bye, Christy. Mwah. The fear is, I don't know if we're Zooming tomorrow, so message me. The fear is that um, we think we need to cast this wide, wide net out there to appeal to everybody, so we talk really generally. But um, that, that actually limits us more than if we just figure out who it is we want. Like she said, that dream team, I love that. That was another big takeaway for me when she said you're 10 on your dream team. Um, figure out who that is that you really want saddled up next to you in the business and write to them and write to your old self. Good. Okay. Bye guys.